everybody. Recently, I asked my online community called the Lightworkers Lab uh, to just ask me any questions. I want to make YouTube videos for spiritual people who have questions and really are looking for the answers to these questions. And to the degree that I can help and or to the degree that I can open a channel and get some answers, that's what I want to do. I want us to all feel that we can live a connected spiritual life. And so I asked my members to ask questions and boy, did they ever. And one of the first questions that came through was a really important one, and it was from somebody who's new to all this spirituality stuff. This is somebody who had probably been in a religious system of their own, been brought up to think a certain way or to believe a certain way, but was now branching out into their own path. And we all have to do that, don't we? We must. In fact, in order to be a true spiritual seeker, you have to be willing to look outside of existing systems of group think and organized or institutionalized faith and religion and really be willing to commune at a higher level with that which truly is. We can call that the all that is. We can call that source energy or creator energy. But you have to get brave at some point in order to find out what that is and how you are actually related to the all that is. And that can be a scary time. Striking out on your own spiritual journey can be harrowing and you can feel very, very alone. This is one of the reasons I created the Lightworkers Lab because for many years in my own journey, I felt alone. Dude, back in the 80s and 90s, it wasn't as hip to be psychic or intuitive or interested in alt religion or alt spirituality as it is now. Now it's fairly commonplace, right? You can turn on TLC or the Travel Channel and you've got ghost investigations and you've got the healer and you've got the Long Island medium. Now it's normal or it's been normalized, but not so back then. And for a long time, I was really scared and I was really, I felt isolated and I felt alone. But I mean, even as recently as just a handful of years ago, people that knew me, people who I would meet, thought I was a witch or thought I was scary and thought I was into something dark and bad simply because I was connected to my own intuition or I believed in something that existed beyond the structures and the group think they thought I was a witch. Not that there's anything wrong with being a witch, by the way, there isn't, but to them that was the worst thing ever. So even today is what I'm saying. People are still being mischaracterized. Even today, people are coming out of family structures of thinking like Catholicism or Mormonism or any other religious um, belief that exists within a family, they're exiting it and they're feeling really alone and their family is not accepting them. And so this person is asking, what can I do? Like, how do I begin? I'm just starting. I'm a little, I'm afraid. I'm nervous about it. What am I going to encounter? Should I be doing this? And what are the things that I can be doing to start this spiritual journey? And I just think that's a great question. She's curious and she wants to know. The first thing I would recommend that we all do as we're beginning and as we're continuing our spiritual journey is to become fearless. We have to be. You have to be fearless because the reality is that you live in an incredibly diverse spiritual ecosystem. Yo, that's the way that it is. Do you know that we can only perceive less than 1% of all that is available to be known and to be seen on the electromagnetic spectrum? Less than 1%. What would happen, do you think, if all of a sudden we could see that remaining 99%, all of the energy, all of the forms and patterns, all of the entities, all of the beings that exist within all of the structures of our dimension, if we were to suddenly have eyes to see, we would freak the F out. You better believe it. And we'd be scared. But make no mistake, there's a lot happening in this dimension and beyond. This is just one out of many dimensions, y'all. There are energies and patterns and beings associated with each and every dimension. And the dimensions that are higher than ours and lower, beings can actually leave their dimension and come into ours and interact with us. So there's just a lot. We have to be less fearful. We can't truly explore as psychic cosmonauts, you know, into the mysteries if we are afraid of what exists there. Now, of course, we're human. And as intuitive people, and as some of us are psychic and, and, and some of us are mediums, we understand that we're going to get startled. We're going to startle because every now and again, of course, a spirit will amble into our environment and freak us out. 
Or all of a sudden we'll hear a voice and that will freak us out. It's okay. It's perfectly okay to startle. What's not okay is to stay startled or really to stay afraid because you have nothing to fear. First and foremost, you have nothing to fear. You have dominion. Dominion. I talk about this a lot, but I can't talk about it enough. Dominion is your sovereignty in this dimension. Now, of course, the Bible tells us when God made us or God made humans, he gave humans dominion over the planet and over the sea and over all of this. And that's true. And we are messing it up. But that's not the only kind of dominion that God gave us or creator gave us. Creator, source energy, gave us dimensional dominion. That means that we are running the show. The consciousness that is experiencing the reality is in control of the reality. You are that consciousness. You, therefore, are sovereign in this space, in this dimension. And every other being that's sharing space with you, all that 99% that we cannot perceive on the electromagnetic spectrum, they all know that you have dominion. They also know when you don't know that you have dominion. When they understand that you're fearful and that you are uncertain and that you are scared, that's when they can begin to mess with you if that is what they wish to do. They can scare you, things can happen, and you will stay in a, a state of fearfulness and that's what they want. Many of those types of beings charge up on your fear and so on and so forth. Not to spend a lot of time on those beings because I don't care about them. Okay. Nor should you. They have no power over you. You have dominion and you have to be fearless. If you want to open up spiritually, if you want to truly understand the magical being that you are and you are, then you have to not be afraid of what exists beyond your knowing because as you open up, and as your frequency raises, this puts you into proximity with source energy, with all that is, and you will begin to experience the benefits of source energy, the miracles, the evidences, the conditions, the angels, the guides, the communications, the information. All of this is proximate to source energy. And as you ascend, and as you continue on your spiritual path, you're going to encounter it. And spirit never wants to make you afraid. Your deceased loved ones would love to rendezvous with you. Your spirit guides would love to rendezvous with you. But if they know in doing so, they're going to freak you out, guess what? They're not going to do it because that's not what they want. The sooner you can get control over your fear, the sooner you'll be able to experience exactly what exists beyond this 3D reality. And we all want that. There's no reason to fear, most importantly. You have dominion. So the first thing to do is to become fearless. Get control over your fear. The second thing you want to do is understand in a fundamental way, in a way that animates how you conduct yourself and how you think and how you speak. Understand in a fundamental way who you are in relation to the God that created you. A lot of people suffer because they don't understand who they are. A lot of people were told in their formative years and beyond that they are nothing, that they are worthless, that they will never amount to anything, and they carry this within them. They carry pain, they carry unworthiness, and they carry other things like unforgiveness and damage as a result of that which has been done to them. They don't understand, nor do they see themselves as they truly are, which is a magical and divine being. Jesus Christ said, you are all gods. You are all gods. And indeed, we are. We are the magicians of this reality. We are the captains and the magicians of our lives. We can create for ourselves in our lives exactly what we want if we were to understand how it works. But we can't even begin to understand how manifestation works if we don't know who we are. And we don't understand our own power. So that's important. So who are you? Let's get clear about that. In order to understand who you are, I have to just give you some context. I'm, I'll try to be really quick here, okay? In the beginning, Creator sought to experience itself. For some reason, I couldn't even tell you why. But Creator sought to experience itself at a higher level. And so, therefore, Creator moved. 
creators started taking form. And what happened or the outcome of this movement is creation. And creation took place in phases, many phases took place. The first phase of creation or the first thing that was ever created is the archangelic. The archangels truly are the sons and the daughters, the firstborn of source energy or God energy. That is why when we come into contact, contact with the archangelic, truly, when we feel them, it has the power to completely lay us out. Fall face first to the floor and have convulsions and be overwhelmed. You see this in some of the sacred texts. You see the founding fathers of certain religions laid out and begging for their lives because they've come into contact with the archangelic. That's the nature and the power of their energy. Their energy is very similar to the creator that created them because they are the firstborn of that creator. And then the archangelic seeking also to experience itself because it was made in the image of the creator that created it partnered with creator to bring about the next phase of creation and in this next phase we have other beings other structures and other energies but important to this conversation we have the higher selves the oversoul self these are the consciousnesses that you and i actually are you see when moses was talking to the burning bush and moses asked who shall i say sent me the bush says Tell them, I am that I am sent you. Tell them, I am. And I believe Moses was speaking directly to his higher self. We all have an I am that I am that stands outside of this incarnation, outside of this dimension, and outside of universal structures altogether, and is proximate, meaning very close to source energy by virtue of being created in the second phase with the archangels. Our higher self-consciousness is divine. It is omni-dimensional. It can be wherever it wants to be, whenever it wants to be, and it can do all things. It is a God, small g maybe, but definitely divine and a God. That is who you are. The higher self, having been made in the image of the creator that created it and the archangelic, also sought to, cre also sought to experience itself and partnered with Source and the Archangelic to dispatch aspects of itself into other phases of creation. And here we, we could go into a long talk about cosmology, and I don't want to do that, but the higher self wanted to live lives and have experiences and live lessons to greatly understand itself. And so sent itself into different lives, different universes. This is just one. Different dimensions in each universe. This is just one dimension in our universe. And you, watching me now, are just one of these incarnations, one of these aspects of a larger whole. This isn't it. When you die, when you leave this dimension and you go through the portal of the fourth dimension and you go wherever you're supposed to go, what you're going to be doing is returning back to the whole of who it is that you are to some degree or another. You are not unworthy. You dig? <laughs> you are not unforgivable. You are not unlovable. You are, I am that I am. Tell them I am sent you. That's who you are. And until such time, my friend, as you understand this for yourself, nothing in your life is going to change. And your spiritual adventure is never really going to begin because it's not going to be you as you truly are having this adventure. It's going to be you as you think you are. You not only have dominion, power, strength, you are omnidimensional. You are the consciousness, the I am consciousness that exists outside of this reality. You are all gods. That's the second thing you need to understand as you're beginning your spiritual adventure. The third thing I would recommend, and there are many things, make no mistake, but the third thing I would recommend once you get these other two things in order, is to start doing something about this passion of yours. To start taking steps that affirm this connection, this higher connection that you are seeking. We can call this spiritual disciplines, spiritual practices, and there are many different kinds. But at the very least, 
you want to make sure that you are meditating. Meditating is so important. And I hear from my students often, and they say, I just can't do it. Meditating is hard. My mind won't shut up. My ego, my monkey mind, constantly chattering. And I get it. Meditation can be hard. Persevere. You have to. Because it's in the stillness. It's in the moment when the mind finally falls away. And it will. It does. It has to. When this happens, it's in the stillness that you get to spend legitimate time with source energy. That's where God lives. The kingdom of heaven is within you. It's accessed through you and it exists in the stillness, stillness of mind and in the stillness of heart. But if you're not making time in your life to experience the stillness and experience the connection to source, which is available through meditation, then you're really never going to connect on that higher level. And if you're like a lot of my other students who want to be more intuitive or want to know about angels or want to understand dreams, meditation is key to that as well. Meditation is going to give you higher understanding and expanded consciousness. Here's how I like to explain meditation to my students. Imagine a couple and they've been married for many, many years, maybe 20 or 30 years. And at night they have a routine. He likes to sit in the chair and have a glass of scotch and read the paper. And she likes to sit in her recliner and she likes to knit or maybe she does the crossword puzzles. They don't talk to each other, but they are together with each other. And her energy informs his energy. And together they build each other up and they connect more deeply. Not because they're talking or yammering or doing anything, but being two Together, this enriches the relationship as a whole. That's what meditation does. Meditation is our opportunity to sit on the couch, if you will, with God and hang out with God and have our energy be informed by the energy of God. And don't you know that when two energies experience each other, both energies change as a result of that interaction, but it's always the stronger energy that changes the lesser energy more substantially. And in this scenario, what we're talking about is us sitting on a couch, a proverbial couch, with the strongest energy, the most powerful and divine energy any of us will ever encounter in our lives. God energy. Meditation, you see, is an opportunity to hang out with the strongest energy that exists and to change ourselves as a result. The changes that the stronger or dominant energy makes forces the lesser energy to adjust or acclimate upward. Check it out. This means the longer we spend time with source energy, the more we have to acclimate up to the level, the energetic level or frequency of source energy. And the higher we go in our frequency, the closer we get to God. The closer we are to God, the more we have the attributes of God begin to show up in our lives. Attributes of God are abundance, wellness, peace that surpasses all understanding, relationships and love and purpose and so on and so forth. That all comes with being close to God. Those are called good gifts and those come from the creator. And how can we be more like creator? Well, we can meditate. We can meditate. And if you're not meditating, you have to. Sorry. I realize that that might not be something you want to hear because you might think it's hard. That's okay. Do it anyway. Even the struggle of meditation is valuable. It's a transmission, you see, that you send from yourself to the universe, to God itself, saying, I'm here. I'm struggling, yeah, but I'm persevering because that's how important this connection is to me. That's how important me spending time with you is. And spirit always honors that. Spirit always meets us right where we are when we are reaching out to commune with spirit or with God. It's powerful. It's transformative. And so meditation is key. To recap, the three things that you're going to need to do as you're starting out your beautiful, new, exciting spiritual adventure is drop the fear. There's nothing to fear. You have dominion of this world, this life, and this dimension. Second, understand exactly who it is that you are. Tell them, I am that I am sent you. 
That is who you truly are. You exist outside of dimensional structures. You exist outside of this incarnation, outside of this universe. In fact, you exist in wholeness and in totality, proximate to source energy, that energy that created you with the archangelic. That's who you are. You are all gods. And the third and final step is meditation and other disciplines, truly. But start with meditation. Making time to spend time with the energy that brought you into being, in quiet and in receptivity. Do this regularly. I recommend multiple times a week, anywhere from four to seven times a week. And if you're just starting out, maybe 20 to 30 minutes. And as you develop in your spirituality to do it for longer periods of time, but do it because it's so important. Start with these three things and soon you'll see you're well on your way to true and deep spiritual understanding and connection. Blessings. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go to crystallandcompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.